welcome to the Press Start Hello. Podcast, Press Start Australia's weekly video game discussion podcast. I'm your host, you and joined today by my fellow gamers and co-hosts, Shannon. Hello. And James. Hello. I'm coming into this podcast real hot today, boys, because uh, it's just one of these days with technical difficulties, my camera cannot work. I'm like real overexposed right now, and I think like if I change the, change the size of this this uh, window on my monitor, it's going to blow me right out. But um, we've got heaps to talk about today. A disappointing box office result for the Borderlands movie being one of them. Gamescom, which is just around the corner. It's only a week away. That's really crept up on me. Another tumultuous week in the games industry. Having a lot of those recently, but got plenty more to talk about uh, in that regard today. Um, and our first look at the new game from the creator of Dishonored. Uh, so plenty to get through. But James, I want to start with you uh, because you did a preview of the cast of Frank Stone, which we've spoken a little bit about in the past. So what is going on with my camera already? Um, but tell me about, about the casting of Frank Stone. Did you find anything in the game you were able to enjoy thus far? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I am um, not. Nah. So I'm sure it's good, but I um, they gave us the, dem- the opening chapter to play, and that's like an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Like, I don't know. I feel like if just imagine playing the first hour of Until Dawn or like any of the Dark Pictures games, like I don't think it's particularly puts it puts like I don't know. Maybe if I was like deep into the like shitty Dead by Daylight lore, I would mm. like appreciate it a little bit more. But um, because this is obviously for people who don't know, this is like the first I think it's the first maybe or like proper single player game set in the world of Dead by Daylight. Um, so. Yeah, I it, it's just another super massive game and I I I don't mean that in a negative way but like it, it it's it's what you expect in a way like you know branching conversations um yeah uh, like was you know, there you kind of... anything different that like stood out as piquing your interest There's literally nothing different <laughs> okay. um like <laughs> um and and to 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 be fair like with super massive games um especially the dark pictures ones i have my favorites and i have ones that i hate um so maybe this is just one of them and a lot of people like the ones that i hate so uh, that for anyone who is like playing along at home i hate little hope um but it is just this... down to how much you care about like the subject right like that's what yeah, it comes I, down to i really. guess and the thing with like this game is it's about four filmmakers who go to this um abandoned steel mill um to make a movie uh, like a horror movie and um it's but the prologue is just like you play as some cop in the past so like i'm assuming that the events that happen there kind of um will inform whatever happens in the future which like all of their games so far have done in some way like the quarry kind of had that and like little hope had that and i mean i'm now that i'm thinking about it almost all of them have that so mm. it is very very formulaic um so if you want more of like like the dark pictures games and i've got a feeling this is maybe why there isn't one this year is because they were making this um I think you might enjoy it. And I think I will still, I say in my preview, like I think I still will enjoy it with some friends on a couch in the co-op mode. Um, because that's what it's made for before you and makes a comment. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I just didn't, I didn't find it that in like that terribly interesting or like groundbreaking in like any way. Like, I feel like there's been yeah. something kind of new with all of the dark pictures games and either narratively or from a gameplay perspective, but this is like very much just, walk through somewhere, pick up an item, examine it with that awkward hand twisty thing that they all do now, you know, like it, <laughs> it's very by the numbers. Um, and at the end of the prologue, like there is definitely a tease for like, cause apparently in the dead by daylight world, there's this like looming evil presence called the entity. And I guess that this is probably going to go more into the history of that. Um, which I'm sure is interesting, but the just I I've got a feeling this is just a bad demo. Like I just don't think that I think this is a really a narrative based game, and like the demo just doesn't have the best bit of the story in there or anything yeah. with hooks. Personally, I've seen some people love this preview. I don't know, I don't I don't really know how, but like I'm glad some people found something to like about it. But it wasn't scary or tense. I don't know. Um, looks good though. Looks better than any Dead by Daylight game. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're a Dead by Daylight fan, like. This will be something not new and exciting for you, but um, yeah. is there? Super massive I don't know anything about Dead by Daylight, but like, if you were to just pick don't this up with no context, would you like? 
know that it's a Dead by Daylight game just from what you played already? No. Or like, okay. Is that the so idea? Like, I, I mean, I guess, maybe. I mean, it'd make more sense, right? Like, I, I think, like, at the end, when the camera pans up and you see, like, the entity, I was like, oh, cool. But, and, like, but I guess if you were a Dead by Daylight person, you'd just have, like, a pog face and like be like whoa like that's the entity like but that's the extent of it and like some of the files you find there's like references to some of the lore and stuff um but okay. yeah i think you can if, you, if you're like put off by this because you're not in that like realm or space um you can still enjoy it well like play it i guess mm. um yeah yeah, um, like without being blown away with any of the stories, uh, like in the super massive games, I've, there's always been something for me to enjoy, and I sort of feel like all of them probably went demo well because it's not like any like one po- component of those games, like any one scene. Like they're quite I, often just like I throwing agree. references out there and stuff. Like it, it kind of comes but, together by the full experience. I agree, but I've previewed these games four times before this yeah. and they've all been really good chapters they've picked yeah Do you know okay. what i mean like i feel like they're they've definitely so you are comparing them to other super massive previews you've done in the which past maybe yeah. i sh- maybe i shouldn't but like for this type of like interactive drama game which like i feel like typically you i know... actually can't think of a better baseline to really compare yeah. against to be honest yeah that um, makes total sense to me hmm well, hopefully yeah. it comes out better in the end than the Borderlands movie seems to be because it's had a shocker of an opening weekend. A report from Variety shows just how dire the situation is with the film reportedly opening abysmally and taking in just $4 million US dollars, falling massively short of its $115 million US dollar production budget. Um, the movie is sitting on Metacritic rating uh, of 27 out of 100, making it one of the worst reviewed video game adaptations of all time and a shocking 0% according to the top critics on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, so yeah, not good and probably worse than I think any of us were expecting. Like We've obviously spoken about um, Borderlands a fair bit now on the show and I don't think any of us had particularly lofty expectations for this film. That being said, Shannon... Uh, is is there any appetite left to go and see this movie? I'm imagining you haven't gone and seen it already. I haven't. I mean, when I saw how bad it was, like at some point on the weekend, I was almost tempted to look at like what what screenings there were and and check it out. But I don't really have a huge interest in Borderlands. Like I'm continually surprised at like the people that are in this movie. Like it's a blockbuster <laughs> cast across the board. Um, yeah. So to I, I don't know to. It's surprising that it's done so poorly, but I feel like they haven't marketed it at all. Like, we barely even know it was coming out right, and we're in this space 24-7, so... Yeah, it seemed to just be happening for a long time and then suddenly be upon us. And, like, yeah. last week I was already getting emails, like, offering discount tickets to go and see it before the film was even out. And I'm like, oh, yeah. gosh. But, but gen- yeah, even if it came to streaming, like, next week, it'd take a lot for me to put it on. Like I'd maybe just chuck it on, but I don't think I'd I'd make it through it. I don't yeah. think. I, the yeah, the runtime I think is like an hour and forty minutes, which actually isn't long by modern okay. standards for a film. But that being said, I can think of a lot I would rather do with an yeah. hour and forty minutes of my time right now. The casting mm. of Frank Stone demo twice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You could run yeah. Uh, James, what is your sort of feeling of the film? I take it you haven't seen it either. Have you heard from people that have dared to go and see it? Um, no, no one I know has seen it. Um, Which is very telling, right? We're three yeah, games like, here. <laughs> no, but, um, I don't think my circles like Borderlands anyway. Um, I, I feel like, like this movie was filmed four years ago. Um, you know, there was extensive reshoots and stuff and I don't, I feel like maybe back then it would have been really, maybe cool. I feel like cool, this film needed to come out 14 years ago, not Yeah, four I was about ago. to say, like, <laughs> I, I remember reviewing Borderlands 3 and not really enjoying it anymore. Even though I liked the first two, like, the, the humour in 3, just, I, I, it was the same humour, but, I mean, I don't know, I'm older now. Like, I was like, I didn't find it as funny. Yeah. Um, so I kind of felt that way about the movie but then apparently like in this movie like they wrote this really good treatment and stuff and then eli roth took over and kind of gutted it with all the gore and stuff Mm. and made it very not like borderlands um which surprised me because like eli roth is known for his like gory movies um but yeah like i i don't know i'm not it doesn't surprise me i don't know if i'll see it um there's i've got cooler movies to go see at this point um so yeah. 
I think it's like ref- this is gonna sound weird, but it's kind of refreshing to not have to have a shit video game movie again. Like I feel like we were getting a little bit too good with like Fallout, Last of Us, and and even Mortal Kombat to a lesser extent. So this is bringing balance to the ah uh, the good old days way. shit video right? game yeah. meditations. It's very nostalgic. <laughs> or very at nostalgic the very least, me. I think it'll make people think about like whether it needs a treatment if it's a video game, like before yeah, just turning everything into a movie. Or a TV show. Like, it yeah. just popped into my head that there was, like, Prince of Persia and Assassin's Creed movies. Like, I f- like I feel like that was a similar... I mean, they weren't as bad as what Borderlands is, apparently, but... Yeah. I think it's impressive, like, this game went up... A um, movie went up with the Rotten Tomatoes of 0%. Like, you don't see that much, so... No. Um, I also that, think it's, like, kind of refreshing that, like, a cast hasn't carried it. Like, people actually go, you know what? You need to make a good movie and, like, write an interesting story. It's not yeah. just about having A-list celebrities kind of on the billing to... That, but that like was going to be my point. Like, just take out the video game portion of it and, like, Jamie Lee, um, whoever else, Jack Black, Kevin Hart, they're both in it, right? Kate like, Blanchett. normally Kate they Blanchett. would... Yeah, like, they're all names that would normally drive bum to seats. So, it's it's a weird one. Yeah. I don't think any of those people care about it, though. Like, well, there was like, no they, press, right? Like, like I haven't seen a single f- interview. Four years ago, I feel like everyone's busy with other stuff. Um, yeah. It's it's yeah. really odd um, how no one is talking about it. So, yeah. even the people who made it. <laughs> so, Do you yeah. think this puts yeah. a dampener on kind of video game ad- adaptations at this point in time, Shannon? Or does the excitement for, like, you know, God of War TV series and all these other titles that have been kicking around... That's I don't think so, high. purely because of everything we've spoken about. Like, there was no expectation for this. I feel like no one really knew it was coming out. Like, nothing has been lost except money from the studio, <laughs> but I'm sure they found it better to release it than not um, with their tax break. So, yeah, I, I don't think so. Like, if it was, like, The Last of Us or... I don't know what's something else really good that's come out recently. Fallout, like maybe mm. that would damage, but it's like such a weird time for for um, Borderlands anyway. As James said, it's kind of been on a downward trend with the last few spin-offs and whatever else. So yeah, yeah. Well, sticking with Borderlands a moment longer, Randy Pitchford took to X and wrote, so what you're saying is you like what my friends and I do with our Borderlands video games even more than you like what some of the biggest and best cast and crew of filmmakers on the planet have done. I'm super flattered. We're working extra hard for you on what's next. For being spelt F-O-U-R instead of F-O-R. Um, you're both looking at me with very puzzled expressions. Well, was, it, yeah. was this uh, debunked or? I just <laughs> see no, this. No. I just think. I just think he's a dickhead. And <laughs> well, like... didn't he have a lot to do with this? I feel like he was hyping it up yeah. years ago. Yeah. I also f- didn't know he was still working. Like I thought, because of all the weird <laughs> shit he was doing. Like if you Google Randy yeah, Pitchford USB it, drive, a, like you'll not... see what I mean. Like, yeah. but um, I didn't know if he was still around. So, um. um and then he, I remember he had a meltdown when I, critics didn't like three. It's um, at, or maybe I'm misremembering that, but yeah, I don't. But I think like that's the worst message you can take from this. But um, yeah, sure. Randy, <laughs> yeah. I, I think if Borderlands Four was it to be announced next week, um, like I think there'd still be excitement there. I think again, people can separate it. Like not, I don't think it'd be the biggest thing in the world, but I think people Did liked Wonderlands- it. Do well. Well, no, but that I feel like that's just different. You rec- it's a little bit different, isn't it? Yeah, I like think guess, so. But... Like, yeah, like you. I just think that genre, as well as a whole, is quite yeah, high too. Like, yeah. not even like putting aside all of the other issues, like I guess taste issues with the humor. I just feel like the looter shooter. I think is... they're going to do it. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that we're going to see a Borderlands Four, and that they will throw marketing money behind it and expect it to have a return. Mm. Whether it does. Um, I don't think it's a slam dunk in this industry anymore. Yeah. I, like, I've never... I've said it before, but I've never really particularly resonated with the Borderlands game. Like, I kind of that appreciate the sort of grindy, cooperative nature of it. And that's the only reason I've played a bit of 2 and 3 in the past. But the humor and the kind of tone of it, I just never... Like, it was just way too kind of juvenile for me. Like, even as a teenager, it just did not appeal to me whatsoever. Could they... Maybe they need to just reboot it then and just... Because I feel like the characters and, like, the gunplay and stuff has been solid. But maybe they need to yeah. just rethink everything. I don't think they will going yeah, off this. Yeah, but... like, I, I don't know if you could do one without, like, the crass jokes and stuff nowadays. Like, I just feel like that is so intrinsic to what the Borderlands brand is. 
Um, and it's just uh, yeah. it's a different time. I think like we've spoken about with GTA, like that's going to be an interesting one in terms of what it's leaned into mm. um, historically. Yeah, so, and G- we'll GTA see. is like kind of you know, a bit more sophisticated and the, it, there's like a satirical sort of element to it. Borderlands just felt lowbrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really dogpiling yeah. on it now, but... Yeah, anyhow. Cancel it. You heard it here first. Um, I doubt we will see any of Borderlands 4 at Gamescom next week. That's for sure. Why, why is Shannon looking at me? Was it really that ham-fisted a segue? No, I think <laughs> so, yeah. at James, it's fine. Gamescom opening night live is happening about a week from now, kicking off the event in Germany. Um, some of the companies confirmed to be at Gamescom itself include 2K, Bandai Namco, uh, Bethesda, Capcom, EA, Kadami, Sega, Square Enix, Ubisoft, and Xbox. So a fair few publishers um, there. James, do you have any predictions going into the event? I figured this probably wasn't like a big enough event for us to do a whole predictions episode, but... Do you have a couple you want to throw out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you would like to see? Do you have a wish list? Um, yeah, I because obviously Capcom's there, so it goes without saying. Um, <laughs> Resident Evil Nine reveal, but I'll, I don't think that'll happen until Ooh. Monster. Hunter. I think it'll just be Monster Hunter. Um, yeah. Uh, have you yeah, done this know. Monster Hunter mobile game ago? Just no, I haven't. Aside. No, okay. no, I don't. Usually, I don't play mobile games as a rule. Um, just not my jam. Yeah. But to get back to your question, um, I don't know. I don't. I'm like kind of keen, but not really. I'm um, I'm thinking there won't be a lot new. I'd love to have this like exciting game announced and out in the next two months or something. But I feel like we've definitely got this year's slate already. Um, and we're just gonna get reveals or dates for stuff we already know about. To be honest, um, I did see. Yeah. Tarsiers teasing a new horror game. Um, they're the people who did the original Two Little Nightmares, so I'm keen to see like mm. where they're going with that. Yeah. Because um, obviously they thought it was big enough to not do Little Nightmares three, so that kind of excites me a bit. But um, mm. yeah, I don't know. Otherwise, like I'm, I'm, I always go in like expecting nothing, so at least I can be surprised instead of disappointed. You know. Yeah, I agree, Shannon. Yeah, I Gamescom's a weird one. Like sometimes there are like little cool bits of um, announcements. I I think we'd I think Xbox are doing something. So I'd like to see um, like an Indiana Jones release date if that's happening or anything like their new consoles that they announced at showcase. They haven't really dated or priced dated. I think they're priced. Um, so just stuff like that. I could see us seeing like James said. I don't think we're going to see anything major, but I think we'll see some beats um, around. Gamescom that should be exciting yeah I kind of suspect we'll just see kind of more of what we've uh, like seen before um like that I'd expect to see a bit more about Assassin's Creed Shadows and that kind of thing um, yeah. but I don't think there'll be any like major announcement that kind of blindsides us here um yeah I like I, I think um I think Indiana Jones is probably like pretty definitive right like machine games i forget what they're based but i'm fairly sure they're european right i'm pretty sure they're sweden sweden, sweden right? that sounds right yeah um so this seems like a like a fitting event for them to kind of do more of a reveal for the game and hopefully a release date too i like i'd figure this would have to sort of be the time unless it just kind of comes out in a tweet later but this seems like the best place to do it um and yeah there's always like kind of some game I've never heard of that comes out of Gamecom that's been produced by, I don't know, like a team in Poland or whatever that looks incredible as kind of like double A sort of um, uh, seemingly large budget sort of game that kind of comes out of nowhere. In previous years, that was games like Atomic Heart, although that never really panned out to be the game I hoped it would be. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of hoping for a few things like that. Um, and yeah, maybe there's things like... Um, uh, no rest for the wicked. We kind of get some more news on about like the de- continuing development of that game. That's remains one of my favorite games that I've played this year. So to hear more about what the release plan is of that game, I think this would be a good opportunity for that um, as well. But yeah, I guess we'll have plenty more to talk about I think, next week on Gamescom. Yeah, it's exciting. I think this like kicks off a slew of releases, like with Star Wars and Astro yeah. Bot and. Um, yeah, it feels like the start of the busy season. Yeah, and Outlaws is out next week, right? End of next week? Two weeks. Two yeah, weeks, okay. Like a week after. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty soon. 
Um, cool. Awesome. No doubt we'll have more to talk about at that on next week. I have a bit of a segment pitch for the two of you now. Because we're always kind of... There's just a lot of like industry uh, studios closing, merging with other studios, people wanting to sell stuff, buy stuff. So like I, I'm kind of pitching this segment as like industry watch or something like that. Do you have any preferences of names or should we just roll industry with that? Industry rapid now? fire. Industry rapid round. Fire. <laughs> I think we'll we should, we'll um... workshop it. We'll keep spitballing ideas. But for now, industry watch is it where we are. Uh, okay. Three months after the studio was shuttered by then owner Microsoft, Hi-Fi and Hi-Fi Rush and the Evil Within developer Tango Gameworks has seemingly been revived thanks to an acquisition by Korea's Craft and Inc., who are the publishers of the games like PUBG, uh, Battlegrounds, and the Callisto Protocol. Um, James, coming to you on first this one. What's your reaction to this news? Were you relieved to hear it? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess. Like, I don't know. I, I don't, I feel like we don't really know enough about this, right? Like, have mm. all of the, has everybody who was there, like, moved yeah. on? that was like, my question. It's, it's really odd. And then to me, um, Microsoft still retains rights to Ghostwire and Evil Within. Um, because yeah. my, 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 in, my instant reaction was like, oh, we can get another Evil Within. But then I found out that, like, they're not actually technically allowed to do that anymore. So, <laughs> I don't but, know. But, I mean, they could do a spiritual like, successor, right? Like, the Evil Within was already... Well, that was already a spiritual yeah. successor. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's going to be like, like a... Yeah. It's going to be called, like, The Bad Inside. <laughs> like, the, like... <laughs> so, you go Resident Evil, Evil Within, Bad Inside. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like... I think... I hope it is actually a genuine... I guess, like, saving all those people's jobs. Because um, if it's just, like, what they're kind of doing with Telltale now, where it's, like, this husk that's living off the name of the the people who made mm. that brand, um, and it's not really those people, like, I don't know. I feel like that would suck. I, um, I do fear then, that a number of people this year will have already moved on, or, like, I, mm-hmm, I don't know if they yeah. were operating in any capacity still. If they Unless were, this was, know, like, down. a deal that was starting, like, started those months yeah. ago, and it's finally happened, so now... I, and then I my guess, second... Go, Jay. No, go. Oh, just no. on that point, I guess the important part is probably the studio heads, because, like, they'll have yeah. the relationship with all the people, so, like, even yeah. if they have left, like, they'll want to... They'll likely go back if they're coming across. But yeah, we just don't have enough. We never got enough info about what that looked and like. It, it might have been people just kind of picked up like contract work and then came back or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. I, I, I agree that James, I hope people like from the, the studio originally do get to come back. And this says to me that they're kind of eager for things like Hi-Fi Rush. Like I kind of... Yeah. Well, it didn't, to me, IP... it didn't seem like much of a fit. I don't know. Well, I think like obviously Craft... Crafton, Crafton, whatever yeah, they want to craft. Yeah. Jeez, um, is what comes and the Callisto yeah. Protocol in PUBG are not. <laughs> yeah, Rush, like obviously but... maybe they just want to diversify no. like their portfolio, as yeah. they say. Um, but then I do worry. Like I think about how they it came out this week or last week that they rushed Callisto quite a bit, mm. um, and the game definitely suffered. Uh, as much as I liked it, the game did suffer. Like as a result, so like I kind of hope that expectation isn't put on them. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I I think it's great. Like Hi-Fi Rush was very good, and like I, I think it's great that they can pr- probably make another one, which I assume they are if they went to the effort to just secure that mm. <laughs> from Microsoft and Bethesda. But um, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, all right. Sticking with some more movers and shakers in the video game industry, Warner Bros. is considering selling off a stake in the video game business, according to a recent report in the Financial Times. Um, I figure we kind of talked a fair amount about Warner Bros. kind of in the wake of Suicide Squad, especially quite recently. Um, Shannon, do you think Warner Bros. can turn it around or is a sell-off probably the best idea for them at this point in time? I feel like they've been trying to sell this off for as long <laughs> as I can remember, like as nearly as long as Press Start's been running. They've, they've always been in this sort of mm. to and throw of trying to sell this stuff off. Um, well, it's hard, right? Because Suicide Squad bombed, but then Hogwarts was like the best-selling game. Yeah. Of last year, but then I think Mortal Kombat probably underperformed. Um, yeah, it's. I think they can turn it around. I, I think Suicide Squad, like from day one, was everyone could see the writing was on the wall with that. Um, and I think they've got the IP to to turn it around. But I, I again, by that same breath, like in that same breath, we've spoken about how it's so hard to have a, a successful game long term. Um, yeah, in this He's day gone. and age. He'd... Am I back now? I think I'm back. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's so yeah, hard. Yeah. I can yeah. I can see why they want to get out of this business because it's so volatile, and I don't know if it's gonna turn around or what's gonna happen. And yeah. even if a game like Suicide Squad can do that poorly and tank their whole company, um, yeah, if someone wants to buy certain, or maybe they just need to license games out. I think that was part of this, wasn't it? That they were gonna try and license. Yeah, that, so that to came me is smart. After, okay, that was like I think the clarification. Maybe I think there was okay. rumors that. Um, to me is smart because it's like the marvel model right where like yeah let's not put all of these ips with one set of publishers developers like let's license it out and make sense and take some of the risk out of it um so to me that that's what they should do like keep mortal Kombat and stuff in-house when it makes sense but these massive ips um yeah yeah like i i think they should have you know allowed um allowed Rocksteady to kind of do what Rocksteady does and focus in on that and but take in the kind of concept of the Suicide Squad game like a live action sort of thing and shop that around and treat it as a license in the same sort of way that Marvel does um like they do have all of this IP um Hmm. that they could better better leverage you know Lord of the Rings being another one as well right um I think Amazon has that now oh Amazon oh okay from a game perspective as well I think from everything everything that's why they're not in multiverses all right um anyhow yeah i think that would that would be wise to sort of do that and not wear all of the costs of um producing these games but yeah it's not like it's not just the video game business that's put them in a dire state of affairs at the moment let's be real um to end on a bit of a sad note then uh, for the segment though, Meta has shut the doors on Ready at Dawn, a first party studio that formed more than two decades ago and was required, acquired by the company in 2020 to develop VR games for the Oculus Meta platform. Uh, Ready at Dawn was formed in 2003 and developed a number of original PSP games based on iconic franchises like Jack and Daxter and God of War uh, and the technologically impressive PS4 exclusive The Order 1886 and 2015. A couple of their notable releases do either of you have any fond memories of any particular ready at dawn game ready at dawn games and disappointed by this news yeah i think daxter was obviously fantastic Mm. portable game the god of war portable games were great for what they were yeah um and the order like i didn't love it i know people loved or hated it but like you could see elements of it like being a classic playstation game in this day and age so i think it is sad um, and I, I'd never played any of the VR games on the list, but from what I read, like they were some of the best VR games um, that weren't existing IP. So it is a sad one, to be honest. Like clearly yeah. a talented team. Yeah, I think that's that's my disappointment. Is like again, clearly, and we say this every time there's a closure, but a clearly a bunch of talented people there that just kind of didn't quite um, either kind of get the opportunities or like. St- stick the landing on the ones that they did have but yeah i mean like going back to the order 1886 like although we people had qualms at the story and the gameplay and all that it was really an impressive thing and i liked what they were doing with the world building and would have loved to kind of explore and uh, explore that world some more and it's kind of disappointing that that panned out the way that it did but yeah it's always unfortunate news i i saw this and i hope playstation would snap them up just because like vr Mm. talent like they've worked with their their franchises like but I, I feel like they're probably not in a position with how they've just restructured everything yeah. to, to go and, and VR do that. Is, VR is so tough to like make a game yeah. that kind of cuts through and support a studio off of it. I feel like there's very few that have done that successfully. Yeah. Long Again, like 20, it's been like 20 years since Daxter and those God of War games. So mm. like we always like get nostalgic about these things, but yeah, the likelihood that it was the same studio as it was when those games were created, like yeah, of course, probably not the case. So yeah, it's tricky. To end on a more positive note, then final topic for the day: uh, Wolf Eye Studios, led by the founder of Arcane and co-creator of games like Dishonored and Prey, has teased their new retro sci-fi first-person action RPG. Uh, James, did you get to check out some of the announcement images and some details included in the press release? Um, yeah, I don't know about the, like, I, I don't know. I'm so kind of sick of this, like, we have, like, Fallout at home vibe that a lot of games are going for. Um, <laughs> that's, but, what, but, that's what I like about this. Yeah, no, I'm so over, like, the retro futurist mm. shit. Like, oh, I, like I but I loved Weird West. Like, I think that mechanically that was such an interesting game. Um, and 
it really made good on its like immersive sim kind of promise. Um, so I'm keen, like the way they're talking about how this game works sounds mm. amazing. Um, but obviously like I worry for them because immersive sims always review really, really well and then don't sell. Like, yeah. and that's the, that's the fucking, that's the thing that matters the most. So, um, I'm excited to see them kind of be able to like take on something bigger than what weird West was just from a like, um, scope and scale perspective. Um, mm. but I really hope it works out for them. Um, and I will be there. Yeah, I kind of hope that there's some extra eyeballs in this, like, following the closure of Arcane Austin and people that, you know, kind of like this style of game, kind of really champion this and get around it and promote positive word of mouth. Like, you know, I guess nowadays it just kind of takes a few passionate people making some TikToks, like, talking about a game that they love for it to gain some traction. So maybe that can happen this sort of time around. But, yeah, I mean, clearly this is, this is a game is a wee while away. Like, they're getting an alpha together to kind of look for a publishing partner. So I'm sure that's kind of some of the strategy in kind of talking openly about this is the fact they can go out and canvas publisher interest without doing so particularly quietly. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of like the style of it. It's definitely like elements of kind of Starfield and Fallout sort of in the mix there, I think, um, based on the look of some of the droids and stuff. Um, I, yeah. I feel like Xbox more. should get behind this and, and, publish it and and help out i feel like they're never gonna do that though right oh, like i don't know mate yeah probably not probably not he's one of the nicest guys that i've interviewed when i interviewed him for prey like he was just mm. so lovely and so passionate so i'm glad to see him doing well and succeeding yeah i feel like this game's gonna have real kind of quite unique personality to it maybe bar the aesthetic as james points out but i'm sure like there'll be um a unique sort of tone to it too when it all comes together uh, all right, I do have a rapid fire question for you both. Call of Duty Black Ops 6 Zombies got a big reveal in the week featuring new maps and a return to round based gameplay. We knew about that in the past, but we saw some of the gameplay um, being featured in some trailers here. James is looking at me smug. I'm curious though, James, are you likely to play any COD Zombies this year? Are you going no. to dabble? Have you ever dabbled? No, I'm good. Okay. I've got other shit to do. <laughs> Certainly um, rapid fire, James. Yeah. Happy Shannon. Um,. Yeah, I've played some zombies in my time. I feel like we've played quite a bit together. Well, yeah, I've played it. You and I've... Oh. I, you had okay. your say. Like, <laughs> oh, no. parked out. Okay. Sorry. No. Okay. Yeah, I guess I the good thing played. about it is it's on Game Pass, right? So, like, James says no, but I feel like maybe it'll be there and he'll just jump in one day and have a good old time for one night, mm. and that's all he needs to do to mm. put a smile on that dial. The waters are calling <laughs> for me to dip my feet in. <laughs> Look, I, I can't speak say. for everyone, but there's a bit of momentum in uh, my group chat to like get back into COD in a big way this year. So mm -hmm. I reckon it's going to be on the cards. And the fact that there's the like, group zombies, chat says. <laughs> zombies got so complicated. Like I really kind of yeah. lost interest in it when it just became this like really big unruly thing. Um, yeah. So the fact that it's just kind of back to its roots a little bit here. Hopefully I can find my way around Is it a bit more. zombies like only every two or three years? Is that what's happening with it or is it every year still i feel like I it think, wasn't last no, year no it's not every year but no. i feel like it's a treyarch thing okay um so whenever they're doing it they seem to do the best one well, they were the original but um yeah yeah i felt like we've seen it in some kind of iteration or so like in other games in between because it just is such a popular thing like it's kind of its own thing now as well but yeah um yeah it, it's not not major cool all right now it's time for What the Wiki, the press start podcast game show where the previous week's winner reads part of a Wikipedia page for an unknown game and we, the contestants, must guess the game. A point is awarded for each correct guess with a round concluding after someone's bagged themselves two points. Get both off the bat. You score a bonus point for a clean streak. Um, James must have done that a couple of times because he's comfortably in the lead at this point in time. He is in first place on 27 points. Shannon in second on 22 I am in third, just a point behind you, Shannon, on 21. Brody in fourth with 17 points. Kieran in with 10 points. And Harry with five. Um, but James, you were last week's winner, which makes you this week's host. Take it away when you are ready. Okay, let's go. Upon release, this game drew significant controversy. According to a report, the developer had been moving people and resources off this game and onto other projects, while still collecting payments from the publisher as if they were working on this game. Oh my god. 
Sorry. When the publisher discovered this misconduct, they temporarily cancelled this game completely, leading to a round of layoffs at the developer in late 2008. The game drew additional controversy when sequences from press demos were compared to the same sequences in the final game, revealing that the finished game was significantly lower in graphical quality. The game is a first-person shooter. The game's campaign mode, which can be played single-player or cooperatively with up to four players, features 11 missions that involve players moving from one checkpoint to another while fighting opponents. Opponents consist of either... Creatures or hostile humans. <laughs> the creatures are fast and primarily attack with their claws or with acid, while mercenaries are slower and use firearms. Oh. Oh. The game is a 2013 first-person shooter. Is Was this that a y- you and... Fuck, I can't remember quite what assortment of words form this title. Okay, but well... Is it Aliens Colonial Marines? It is Alien Colonial Marines. Congratulations. <laughs> Colonial Marines. Okay, you're... not plural. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's close enough. Um, I didn't know yeah, the yes. ins and outs of um, the yeah, it was production a big of that deal game. That's crazy. At the time. Yeah, and it took ages to come out, but it's apparently because they weren't working on it. That'll do it. Damn. Okay. <laughs> so, Ewan's on one, Shannon on none. Disappointing. It's still Shannon's it's... game, though, I feel. Oh, really? Just who knows? Tie-ins. Yeah, no. Maybe, who knows? <laughs> the game was developed by a developer best known for their work on Total War strategy video games. Shannon. This game was conceived when the develop. Oh. Yes, Shannon. Nah. I was going to say Alien Isolation. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> Shannon, congratulations. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. That's... Bullshit. <laughs> Did you so know that? Or was you just you just named a random well, alien game? No. I'm just putting two and two together. You, you can I guess for game number three? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so you're both one point. No Damn clean it. suits for you. Sorry. An early build of this game was submitted for review by the Office of Film and Literature Classification, but was denied classification in Australia in 2009 and effectively banned for sale. Sega announced that there would be no recut version for release in Australia and oh. that it would appeal the oh, decision. You, uh, uh, yes, Ewan. Uh, Manhunt 2. No. The game's refusal of classification brought up the issue of a need for an R18 Plus rating in games, a move supported Shannon. by many Dang. members. Yes, Shannon. Uh, Alien vs. Predator. It is. Congratulations. Yeah. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <You're the winner. laughs> Why didn't I I'm just dead. stick with the alien? Yeah. I'd... Yeah. Well, Fuck. I'm watching all of them and Romulus is out this weekend. So I thought I would have Big. some fun with that. Damn. Class that could have been a clean sweep. The best fucking game ever, by the way. Yeah. I'm Such surprised they've never, never really it. done that. I need to. I should do that. I wish they would make another one. Like, well, the VR one. No it's idea. the VR one. It's not no, the same. I want but... a new game. But yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm excited for Romulus. I've heard good things thus far. I love F- Fetty, Fetty Alvarez. Yeah. I trust him with my life. I don't know if I've seen good... any of their other films. Evil Dead but... or Don't Breathe are the two big ones. That's right, yeah. Um, this is like, that's the. Yeah. Um, when did that remake come out of Evil Dead? That was only recently, right? 2013 ish. Oh, okay. It was longer than I thought. Yeah. Anyhow, with that, let's bring an end to what was this week's episode of the Press Start Podcast. Subscribe to us on Listener or the podcast service of your choice. Follow us at press.au and visit the sites at pressstart.com.au. We've been joined today by Shannon. Yeah, you can follow me at Shannon Grixty. And last but not least, it was James. Yes, you can find me on exit at James, A T J A M Z. And I've been your host, Ewan. You can follow me on socials at Ewan underscore Roxborough. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next time, happy gaming. Bye. Bye.